This is the Autec Research QF1A that was made a couple of decades ago, but I found it to be one of the most effective audio filters available. And I've done some changes on mine to make it more uh, compatible with my setup. Um, the first thing I did was drill a hole here for the headphone jack. So now I have a speaker and a headphone jack. And then I drilled a hole here and put a single pole uh, toggle switch in so that I can turn the speaker off and on. So the headphones remain on at all times. A speaker, I can turn it off and just listen to the headphones alone. And um, in order to compensate for the gain boost uh, from this LM380 here, I found that using a, um, it's a 220 ohm resistor here between the uh, this end of this 3.9K, I just tack soldered it on there and up here is ground. And so I just ran the two, 220 ohm from the, the left side of the uh, 3.9k uh, from there to ground. The uh, this is your input, and all of your input signal goes through this 3.9k, and then it goes to the to the uh, input of the chip of the amplifier. And uh, I found that uh, by shunting a portion of the signal to ground a good portion of it to ground through here that it reduced the volume uh, to where it's uh, about the same when I turn the uh, speaker off when I when I go to bypass and uh, which is the off position and then when I go to on uh, it, it puts the uh, it puts the filter in line and uh, and my uh, gain stays about the same so then, um, the headphone jack, I found that it cut the volume down for it, so I use a 100 ohm resistor, and uh, that goes in series with the output of the uh, amplifier. This wire here is your output. And it formally went over to right here on the speaker. So what I did was I took it loose from right here and connected it to this resistor. And then it goes through the resistor to the hot side of this little headphone jack. The speaker gets its audio from over here. Off, right off the switch and um, that would be I can focus in on this that's this point right here it's the middle the middle terminal on the left and actually that is the same point as this white wire they come together underneath the board but it was just convenient for me to run this little black wire over to my um, my off on switch and then from that switch over to the hot lead of the uh, speaker so now um, with the speaker there's no resistor in series we still have this pull down resistor here on the input so that keeps my volume about the same and then with the headphones we're using an extra 100 ohms in series with the headphones now this possibly could vary with the speaker and the and the headphones that you use and i'm using uh, 8 ohm headphones from back in the past and i found that i like the sound of the old uh, 8 ohm type headphones better than these newer 32 ohm headphones that they have nowadays.
<clears throat> and uh, the speaker that I like for CW is this little MFJ uh, Clear Tone 281. And it's pretty sensitive, so it tends to uh, to get a little bit loud. So that's why uh, you know it, it may it may vary as to what you what you need here. Uh, it may not be 220 and 100 ohm. Just depends on your headphones. But I I think it's going to work out pretty well. And while we're in here, I will say that there were two versions of the QF1A. Uh, one was AC powered and it actually had a transformer filter capacitor an AC cord coming out the back and uh, then the other one was DC powered which is like this one and uh, then that eliminates the transformer and so forth um, the switch on the front still says AC on but otherwise they're identical and of course you can convert the AC powered model to DC very easily just by putting in your own jack. So there you go. Um, hope this was uh, hope this was helpful, and thank you for watching.